Okay, everybody. Um, my name is Mae Foreman and I'm from Mud Island Community Garden. And we're delighted to have this opportunity to share with you all the making of this particular community garden in Dublin's north inner city. Um, some of you may have seen that image there. It was on the hoarding around the new flats being built in Poplar Row, um, just recently taken down. Um, so when I'm thinking of um, the garden, it's, I mean, we're acting locally, but we're really thinking globally. We're talking about improving the environment, about building community through recreation, education, and creativity. Um, that's the site where the garden is now. Um, this, these photographs were taken in 2009. People may remember Newcomen Court, there were some buildings there, and um, they were knocked down, and then the crash came, and they were just left derelict and local residents, some of whom backed onto the site, started campaigning for permission to develop a community garden on the site. And believe it or not, it took us almost two years of campaigning to persuade the council that we were a responsible enough group of local volunteers to take on such a task. Um, these images here now are outside the Larkin Unemployed Centre in, on Bloomsday in 2010 when we began to get um, local people to sign a petition arguing for permission to build a community garden on the site. So after two long years of battling with the council, they eventually agreed to work with us and gave us a license to develop a garden on the site. They cleared it, they fenced it, and that's what we first met when we came onto the site in October 2011. Um, so the picture there is of the very first meeting on site and if any of you have been to the garden you'll recognize some familiar faces. Um, so we began work on the site the end of 2011. One of the first things we did was paint the Silver Harris fencing green to disappear it and bought ourselves a, a garden shed. And we quickly realized that we needed to get some money. Um, the, the council had just demolished the old buildings on the site. So it was just, you went down six inches and you met rubble. So we needed to buy in soil, we needed to build raised beds. And the Community Foundation of Ireland were our first funders. They were running a fund at the time, the Community Growers Fund. So we availed of that, of Agenda 21, which is now called the Community Environment Action Fund, and various other bits and pieces. But I'd say at the moment, our main funders are Dublin City Council through the North East Inner City Development Programme and Croke Park, because we're, we're very much within the footprint of Croke Park. So we actually set about building the garden in quite a systematic way. Everybody who was involved at the time was asked to draw their perfect garden. And a couple of the, the guys who were going to physically build it for us came up with that drawing there. And you can see from the outset, we had a central meeting area um, and other areas which were going to lend themselves to social gatherings. So from the beginning, the social element, the recreation element of the garden was planned. And two years later, that's what we had achieved. Um, and as you can see, quite a lot of people from the get-go have been involved in helping to, to get the garden. Um, we structurally were quite a, a loose network, but we do have a large active committee. Everybody on the committee is a key holder. The committee is elected annually at our AGM, which is usually held in the Larkin Centre. And that's open to any member to um, attend. And membership is open to anybody in the area. And we're continually um, open to and welcome in anybody who wants to get involved. Um, and I think at last the council have begun to recognise the worth of having a community garden in the area. In fact, we're not the only one. There's two other gardens within the north inner city. Um, Farmers Hill is currently, um, they, they've closed it temporarily, but it will be open again. And there's another one, Summer Row, in just off the North Circular Road. And we would all kind of work quite closely together. So the council nominating us for Pride of Place in 2017 was an indication that we had at last arrived in terms of their um, esteem. So we're still entirely volunteer led. We open for gardening three afternoons a week. Um, we've got very good links with the local community. You can see in the image there, we roped in the local primary school to help us spread some wood chip, which we get regularly from local tree surgeons. 
Um, and also, obviously, the garden is about improving the environment. We take veg waste from members and also from the local cafe on the corner um, where the garden is sited. Um, and in terms of building community, we have always had an open day. Um, initially, it was, it was our only event throughout the year. And we always have it on the Saturday nearest to Bloomsday. Um, there's some images there of open day and you can see we could have maybe between two and 300 people coming through the garden. We get a farm in for the kids, we've got workshops, we've got live music. And it's at this stage, a staple on the um, local calendar. <coughs> our Halloween event is something that has become another staple on the local calendar. Some of our members are really big into Halloween. So the garden every 31st of October is completely transformed into a spooky haunted place. Um, which is usually good fun. And then over the last couple of years, we've also started running Christmas and spring fairs on the site for members to sell arts, crafts and other bits and pieces. And occasionally we get the um, music curated by the Five Lamps Arts Festival. We worked with them quite closely, particularly around the spring fair. And another aspect of building community through integration, and um, this was an initiative by some of our members who were teaching English out in Mosny, the Direct Provision Centre. And just to say that we're always open to members using the garden space for um, an idea, a project that they come up with. So this particular event was based around potato planting. So it would have been the end of March and we had a halal barbecue, we had live music and um, the connections that we made with the they were mostly Syrian and Kurdish refugees, relatively newly arrived in Ireland. Some of those connections have remained to this day. Another aspect of building community is through education. So in the last 12 months, we've had a workshop on food fermenting, and we also had one on fruit tree pruning. And they're open to anybody in the area, not just members, and we'd advertise them through um, social media. Um, there's Hugo from the East Wall History Group. Another thing we've done in terms of education is running local history walking tours. We did one, this particular one was in um, 2016, if I remember rightly, um, looking at the connections with the area um, and between the area and everything that had happened in 1916. So in that picture, Hugo's actually standing outside the house where the guy who printed um, the proclamation lived and we presented a copy of the proclamation to the um, residents of that house who hadn't realized the history of it. Another aspect of building community is through creativity and the arts and we've had loads of workshops in the garden and um, the last couple of years now we've taken part in Crinninanog and have run um, various arts and crafts workshops for children. Um, last year I think was a year where everything came together in terms of events in the garden. I think some of the gardeners were giving out. We were having too many um, large events. We had one every month throughout the summer. So this year has been a, in stark contrast to it. And um, this was in May. We took part in the national, the big hello, um, where everybody was invited to come bring their own picnic. And the house presents who curate music in a local pub, Ansley House, curated um, music for us throughout the day. Um, <clears throat> in July, we had the festival, a ukulele festival, the Strum and the Strand. And again, this was some members who are ukulele players. They teach ukulele in the local primary school. So they curated it. We didn't actually have to do any of the organizing. And we ran a cafe, which was a source of funds for the garden. And in August, another member who was at the time teaching sound production in Kalorsh the Dulig um, got his sound production students to organize a day long festival of electronic experimental music. Um, I think there was five bands, five DJs and a family rave to start it all off. And that was something that was funded by Culture Connects. Um, so back to the basics, gardening is still very much the core activity of the garden. Um, Dermot there on the right, who's one of our oldest members, um, picked those potatoes just last Saturday. And as you can see, he was proud as punch. Um, 
of them. So I think the garden is really a good example of sustainability and biodiversity for the North Inner City. People can come in and see what's growing throughout the seasons. Anybody who comes in and puts in a couple of hours work will go home with a bag of whatever veg we have at that time ready for eating. Um, that's a quote from a Guy Clark song, if anybody's familiar with that. The only two things that money can't buy, and that's true love and homegrown tomatoes. Um, so just to tell you about a couple of the other growing projects that we have in the garden. This is with the local primary school, and the kids planted the seeds in February, just before the country went into lockdown. And the plan is to grow wheat, mill flour, and make pizza in our lovely pizza oven there on the right. So we've been having to look after it in the absence of the children and the school newsletter has been giving them updates on what's happening. So we're hoping when they come back in September, they're going to be able to harvest the wheat, mill the flour, we'll have to supplement it of course, and they're going to make some pizza in the oven. Um, another growing project that we have is social hops. There's a movement in throughout the country actually, but in Dublin there's lots of people growing hops. Some people might just have one plant on their balcony. We harvest them collectively at the same time. And over the last few years, we've brought the hops over to the Bernard Shaw pub and they've been collectively um, brought to Rascals Brewery and a social hops brew made. And then we all get free beer. Um, so this year we'll probably be going to the relocated Bernard Shaw, which is up in the porterhouse. So just to give a little bit of, of um, plugging for the, the health aspects of the garden, um, the UN has 17 sustainable development goals and the garden definitely ticks the box for at least three of them. Good health and well-being, sustainable cities and communities and responsible consumption and production. Um, there, there's, proof, there's been loads of research done into the proven benefits of gardening um, and community gardening in particular. Um, for green care, which would kind of cover um, therapeutic horticulture. And some GPs now would be socially prescribing people to come and spend time in a community garden. And we've worked with lots of community groups and have um, links with organizations working with adults with mental health problems or um, uh, there is an uh, autistic adult program as well. And awesome members from these different programs can come in and, and work in the garden. So I've just put up that picture there of Eileen, who was one of our oldest members in her late 80s who died this year. And as you can see, she was um, very much enjoying the space in the garden. As I said, this year, because of COVID, none of the events that we had last year could be replicated this year. So during the, the height of the lockdown, we decided to give out window boxes to members so people could come to the garden, get a window box, fill it with compost, and we gave them a lucky bag of, of, of seeds. And the boxes were made by the Mendicity Institution. Um, <coughs> the other things that we did, and it was a first for us, was to uh, practice live streaming from the garden. Um, this concert to commemorate the bombing of the North Strand in 1941 had been planned for some time. It was originally meant to happen on the banks of the canal around the corner. Um, but when we were, weren't, um, we were told we couldn't go ahead with that, we decided to live stream it from the garden. And I think to date it's had something like 1,500 hits on the video so it has reached quite a quite a wide crowd and um, so we decided to do the same for our open day which is always the saturday nearest to bloomsday um, there's a quote there from james joyce at newcomen bridge father conmy stepped onto an outward bound tram where he disliked to traverse on foot the dingy way that was um, the dingy way past mud island and Mud Island was a notorious area of renegades and pirates. I, I mean, Hugo McGuinness from the Eastwall History Group could correct me, but I think it was roughly from the middle of the 18th century to the 19th century um, that it was at its peak. So on the, the left-hand side there, Fanula Halpin, who's the chairperson of Mud Island and a member of the Uncut Diamonds, a local amateur theatre group, was performing scenes from Molly Bloom's soliloquy sitting on a flower bed, which was a bit apt. And the other picture is the, the Swan um, Youth Service. They took over the stage and gave us a great concert as well. 
So in terms of the bigger picture of community gardens, we're, we're very much part of a growing network, both in Dublin and nationally. There's a group called Dublin Community Growers. There's over 40 gardens um, affiliated. And there's also Community Gardens Ireland, which is a 32 county network of gardens. Um, and we're involved in both of those networks. <clears throat> so just to end on that picture, enabling people to live life sustainably, thinking globally, but acting locally. Um, you've got the connections there for Mud Island. The house presents wixsite.com um, forward slash Mud Island. You can email us at Mud Island Community Garden at gmail.com if you want to contact us and as i said we are always open to new members so i just thought i'd end on this um two minute snapshot of our open day last year so you can see what we've missed out on this year this was shot right at the very start of the open day just as people were beginning to arrive And that's the end.